Hello and welcome to another United Way Partner Spotlight. Today I'm sitting down with Chastity Rufner of Rural Dynamics, RDI. We're going to talk about taxes. How are you doing today, Chastity? I'm great. And yourself? I'm good. Thank you. Now, what is Tax Help Montana? Tax Help Montana is the um, program under Rural Dynamics for VITA and TCE taxes. We do free tax preparation across the state of Montana. Okay, how long have you guys been doing that? Since 2004. I took over in 2018. Um, so, what is that? 2004 to now 18 years? <laughs> so, not your first rodeo. No. <laughs> <laughs> Which means that people that come to RDI for tax help, they, they definitely can put, feel confident that, that you guys can handle the... <laughs> yeah, a rural dynamic started in 1968 with basically mm -hmm. the emphasis of financial stability for families okay. that everyone deserves to be financially stable. And so, all the programs we do go off that, that idea. Okay. Now you mentioned two programs, VITA and TCE. How are those different? So VITA stands for Volunteer Income Tax Assistance. TCE stands for Tax Counseling for the Elderly. They have different qualifications for the two. They are all ran by volunteers. So I think the volunteer income is a little misleading <laughs> <laughs> because we need volunteers for both. Um, it's the requirements under them. VITA mm -hmm. is generally low to moderate income families. Okay. So you're looking at about 54000 or less of household income. Um, as well as, you know, no rentals and, and things like that. But that's the main guideline. And then the tax counseling for the elderly is just over the age of 60. Okay. So there's no income limit on that one. Now, I know when I was in the military, we had VITA volunteers that helped as well, and there wasn't income limits. So there might be people that might be a little confused if they were familiar with that, but there's, there are limits to, to this version of VITA. There, uh, there are. It's not a hard line in the sand. You know, if somebody mm -hmm. comes in and we go all the way through the return and we get and they're over a little bit and it was something that was within, within scope of what we were allowed to do, we're not going to make them go somewhere else and start over. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. <laughs> that's good to know. And what's the relationship that you have with, uh, between the Tax Help Montana and the IRS and the Department of Revenue? So the VITA um, program is under the IRS, the government realized that um, it is cumbersome getting your taxes done, which mm -hmm. it is, um, and then it's a very expensive process, also it is, and so they actually are the ones that initiated and began the VITA program, so it is a, a taxpayer funded program. So we are um, certified with the IRS, we you know have mm -hmm. to do a test with them and be, all of us are IRS certified tax preparers, but we are not part of the IRS, sure. um, so we don't have access to any of their, you know, any of their computer systems, any of their information, anything like that. And the same with the Department of Revenue, because it is an IRS-funded and set-up program. They do let us do the state returns too, because otherwise mm -hmm. it would be very inconvenient. You go one place for federal, <laughs> one place for state. Absolutely. So it's the same with the DOR. We have a very close working relationship with both of them, but we're not a part of either one. So it's a good thing because people don't have to hate you the way that some right. of them hate the IRS. <laughs> <laughs> You're actually here exactly. to help. <laughs> uh, I, now, I think the IRS gets a bad rap on that too. <laughs> Man, they, they have a taxpayer advocate program that is amazing. Well, awesome, awesome. Now, you, you're the only employee of, uh, that, that's attached to this program. Everybody else is a volunteer, is that correct? That is correct. And, um, and because of just the nature of Montana being Montana, we're very large with mm -hmm. a very small population. So when you go to other states, you'll have people that have one or two counties, maybe one county, maybe three different agencies mm -hmm. cover a county because it's so, you know, it's so dense in population. Montana, it's just me. I cover the entire state. Um, as well as I actually have a couple sites in Idaho because it's right on the border there. Okay. So being just me, volunteers are, they're always vital, but they are so vital for our program. And if somebody wanted to be a, a, a volunteer for you, how would they go about that? Um, several different ways. You can go onto our website and there is a be a volunteer here and you can send the information in. You can contact the IRS directly and mm -hmm. they will put you in contact with whoever is you know closest to you. Um, because there are like AARP and stuff like that also does the um, mm -hmm. TCE end of it. Um, you can email me, you can go to our, <laughs> I said our website, you can email me. Um, there are several different roles and responsibilities, so it's not just preparing taxes. Mm -hmm. um, we do need people to just say hi, here, have a cup of coffee, um, or to look at their paperwork, make sure it's all there. 
as well as prepare taxes. Sure. Yeah, I know that, that last year, the United Way, we were an agency that was working with RDI on as one of the front doors, and we right. didn't, our volunteers, we didn't actually have to, to prepare taxes, We didn't, which is great because I'm terrible with numbers. You don't really <laughs> want me doing your taxes for you. Yeah. But we did assist with making sure that we had everything that RDI required and before scanning and sending it in to you. Right. So, and I was really amazed with the number of, of people that we got phone calls from that were just nervous about, say, doing it online with, you know, we have, the United Way has our, our uh, free taxes, uh, myfreetaxes.org that we use. But there are a lot of people nervous about that. So RDI still sees a lot of families that... We absolutely do. Um, it is, the, the tax law in the United States is just cumbersome and it is very overwhelming for a lot of people. So even though when you go in and use the online software, it walks you right through it. It will ask you every question. Um, essentially gets exactly what we do, but people are nervous about it. They don't, mm -hmm. they don't understand the law or they don't know what the difference was or they don't quite understand the question. Um, so not only do we have people who they don't have access to the internet, so they come to help us, or they um, they have some kind of a problem where they can't use the, the mm -hmm. computer. They don't have a computer. They can't use the internet, whatever. We also have people that will go online and then, um, you know, do it themselves, but they're able to call us for assistance as they're going through. And that's a good thing, too, because I'm sure it yeah. gets being with the volunteer, you don't always have all the volunteers that you need, and so people yeah. who are willing to try and use the computer first Oh, absolutely. Probably helps a lot. <laughs> it does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you're always there as a backup, and you cost what compared to, say, you know, the other, the, the other preparers? How much are you going to save them? We cost zero dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, so on average nationwide, the average tax, tax return is $273 right now. Most places charge by the form, so if you have one W-2, it's $50. If you have an earned income tax credit, it's $100. They charge per form. Um, so it's well, hard to say exactly what it's going to be. Mm -hmm. but, but it, it can, can rack up lot. fast. It can rack up fast. It can rack up really fast, because those yeah. are what you just listed off are some very standard forms. you got kids, you probably have earned income credit. You've got that additional form right there. Exactly, and the child tax credit, and you probably had daycare, you know, child care expenses to add in there, and that all just increases the 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 cost of it um, last year we figure we saved approximately 1.2 million dollars in tax preparation fees for Montanans that's a lot that is a lot and that doesn't even count what you actually assist with in, in putting <laughs> money back into people's pockets from no. just doing the uh, doing the filing no um, last year we our returns were um, 8.9 million mm. So that was money directly into Montana's pockets. Now, of course, if somebody's going to utilize your services, they need to, to come prepared. You know, they can't just say, show up and say, here I am, do my taxes, and you're <laughs> like, okay, give them to me. <laughs> we do have people show up just like that every year. It's, it's interesting. Um, no, they do. They do need to know what they're coming in um, and bringing. We do have flyers up. You can go to our website. You can check us out on Facebook. All that information is always there. Mm -hmm. Um, if somebody just needs to know what they have, you know, it's a good idea. Right off the bat, we need ID, we need Social Security card, we need your tax forms. We don't know how much you made. So, you know, your W-2s, your um, 1099s, all of that. This year is um, going to be particularly interesting because clear back in March, mm -hmm. we had that third stimulus payment. So that is not, it's not taxable, it's not included as taxable income, but you have to report whether you got it or not so they can give it to you. Um, it's the only way to get it at this point. If you don't file taxes, you will never get that money. So it's a good idea to file. It is a great idea. Um, and then the other one with the advanced child tax credit payments that people had, if they did not receive any payments, we need to know they didn't receive any payments so they can get it. If they got payments, we need to know how much they got so it doesn't hold up their return. Mm -hmm. Because if they tell us, you know, they got this amount and they really got this amount, it's gonna hold up them getting their refund. Sure, sure. And I did rem recall having read in article after article that the vast majority of tax filers actually get refunds. They don't usually end up owing. So it's Absolutely. another reason why it's good good to file because you'll probably, the odds are you're going to get money back. Most likely, yes, especially the people that qualify for our program and that we help. Mm -hmm. um, 
definitely the vast majority of people are Because they're lower income, back. and so that means they're probably going to be getting back. They're not, right. you know, Donald Trump and Bill Gates are no. not lining up to use, to use this service. Hence a lot of the <laughs> income guideline right there. When you um, start making more money, you have more intensive things. So while we say that, you know, our tax uh, preparers are two different levels, they're basic and advanced, that is different at the IRS level. At the IRS level, every VITA and TCE mm -hmm. return is considered a simple return. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's just a level within simple returns. Once okay. you start getting to, you know, people with considerably more income, like you mentioned, um, those are more complex returns. Those are a lot more forms. Those are a lot more tax law intensive. So those don't qualify at all for, for VITA services. But the vast majority of folks that probably live here in the area could utilize the services with no problem. Absolutely. And again, yeah. get money back. So it's also probably a good idea to not wait until the last minute to call up and, and schedule an appointment. I also rec right. remember a lot of people seemed for some reason to wait until the last moment yeah. <laughs> to, to call and it's like you're going to get money back. You might want to do this sooner than later. People get very worried that they're going to owe money. Um, even if they never have, even if you know they've filed taxes for 50 years, it's still that initial mm -hmm. little panic that you're going to owe money, and so they try and put it off, when really most of them would, would be best served by coming in early and getting it done. And also, even if you do owe money, that filing in January, February doesn't change when you have to pay. So if you file in January, February, now you have found out what you need to pay, and you still have until April 18th this year to to pay, to make that payment. So, so that gives you time to try time to set some to money see, aside. Yes. And it, it, you know, you have the opportunity to, again, if, you, if you're willing to try out online, certainly there you don't have to, to, to file at the end. You can go through right. the process of working your taxes, knowing what it is that you're probably going to either get back or out, so you should have a better picture of things before proceeding. Absolutely, yeah. Now, what are some of the changes that pe that people might be seeing in their taxes in 2021? I know we talked about earned income credit, and there's there's some child tax credits and the like. What, what yeah, else? There were, what are some of the big of surprises? <laughs> <laughs> so the um, the child tax credit is one that is um, very I interesting to explain. So it's not a new thing. It's been around for for years and years. I can't even tell you the first year that it was implemented. Mm -hmm. It's just normally, it's always done completely at tax time. And so this year with the advanced payments, people think it's, it's a different tax credit and it's not, but it has changed. Normally the limit is $2,000 per kid. Um, they changed it so it's 3,000 if you're, they're over six and it's 3,600 if they're under six and you get half of that up front. The other difference is it's fully refundable. So the full 3,000, the full 3,600 is coming back to you if you have a kid in that age range. Okay. Normally it's not. Normally it's only up to $1,400 refundable to you. So you have to have a tax liability to get the full advantage of the $2,000 because the 600 is a credit against what you owe. If you didn't know anything, you don't really get an advantage from that 600. Okay. Um, so that's the big change on the, on the advanced child tax credit. And then the earned income credit this year, big changes there. They basically increased the limits, I'd say a good 30, 35%. I didn't do the mm -hmm. exact math. Um, but the biggest change is typically you have to be between the ages of 25 and 65. So once you hit 65, there's no exceptions. You're not getting earned income credit. Under the age of 25, you have to have a child. This year, and for this tax year only so far, they may extend it, but right now just for this tax year, you only have to be 19. You don't have to have any children or anything else. You have to be 19 or older and have earned income. It is the earned income tax credit. You do have to have earned income. Um, but that's it, that's the only requirement. And you may actually see, uh, see very similar numbers to previously. Uh, even though you might have gotten the, the, the previous, the advanced credits because of the way that the numbers have changed. Yeah, um, there are a lot of articles about people seeing lower returns and I am sure there are a lot of people that are gonna see lower returns. I tend to hyper-focus on the people that we're helping and I think with the people we're helping, we're not gonna see any differences or at least not any major differences. In fact, I expect probably they'll, they'll get bigger refunds for those reasons, with it being fully refundable, mm -hmm. with the earned income credit limits going up so much, as well as now they have also increased the child and dependent care credit. Okay. Um, so normally you only get 35% of what you paid up to 
you know, if you paid 4,000 for one kid, you can get up to 35% of that. The, or 2,000, excuse me. This year is 4,000. This year they said you can get up to 50% of 4,000 for one kid, 8,000 for two or more. So you have a lot more, um, you're going to get a lot more credit for any daycare expenses that you did pay. So they'll actually compensate for the money that you may have already previously gotten, and therefore your refund may not, may be still in the same ballpark that you're used to, exactly. even though you've already gotten some money. Yeah. Now, where can taxpayers find out about when appointments are and where that they might need to go and who they need to call and, and that sort of thing? The easiest two ways to do that, there are numerous ways, but the easiest two ways are to go onto our Facebook page, Tax Help Montana, mm -hmm. um, or to our website, ruledynamics.org slash taxes, and all of that is going to be listed there. If people are, they can't remember the name of the agency or they can't, you know, whatever, you can also go to irs.gov and, you know, where's the close, closest FIDA site to me? And there will be an entire listing of it in there as well. Okay. Um, if people have questions, they can send us a message through Facebook. They can send us a message through our website. They can email me directly and I can answer their questions. Okay. Now, one last question. I like to do my own return. Mm -hmm. How can you help me? <laughs> so when you go, uh, there's a link on our on our website, and if you go in and use our software, you also get a phone number to use our our support. Okay. So if you do go in and you're trying it, and maybe you're struggling or you don't understand the question, you're still going to be able to get help from us and our volunteers. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming to visit thank with you. us, Chastity, and thank you as well for joining us. And we look forward to seeing you next time on another United Way Partner Spotlight. Goodbye.